the point of this video, which is the third on discounting cash flows, we can discount cash flows that are not annual, but rather more frequently than annual. That brings us uh, one step closer to the reality of how um, investment professionals would go about using discounted cash flows formula. So we, we remember the formula, hopefully, which is that the um, present value of cash flows is equal to the future value of cash flows divided by one plus y, and that one plus y function raised to the power of n. That all works great when we have um, the value of all these things, the present value. Um, well, I'll say this is the future value, and that could be what is the cash flow going to be, uh, future value, and y, which is also known in this as the discount rate, could also be called often uh, yield or IRR, and N, we have previously said, represented time, um, well, I'll throw right here, but could more generally generally be number of, of uh, discounting periods. And when we did the annual discounting, that was uh, years, but now in this video, I wanna show that in fact, time or represented by the N variable is, is more properly known as uh, number of discounting periods that we are discounting back at the given y. That all sounds kind of complicated, but we're going to um, explain it. Now, actually, we're going to take this um, formula here and add an additional variable, which I'll call p, and I'll label it in a moment. But p is essentially uh, takes an annual discount rate or annual yield and makes it work for non-annual discounting by dividing by p, and p is simply, uh, here I'll put it here, number of times per year that we need to discount. Uh, and again, that sounds a little abstract, but what that really means is if uh, the cash flow is not once a year, but rather four times a year, then the p is going to have to be, uh, you guessed it, four. If the number of cash flows per year that we're discounting is going to be six, p is going to have to be six, etc., etc. Uh, a typical bond works this way, so I'm going to use the example of pricing up a bond using uh, non-annual discounting. And bonds typically pay twice a year, so the P in that case is going to be uh, 2. It will divide the annual yield number by 2, so instead of having a 10% yield, for example, we have, a, we have 5, the Y over P. Uh, and then N just takes the how many... Um, how many uh, discounting periods do we have total? Again, uh, an example is probably the best way to go about doing this. So I'm gonna price up a bond which is worth $100,000 and figure out what is it worth um, today. This is the central function of people who are involved in the bond markets uh, um, and investment. The investment community uh, does this as the kind of a core skill of how, what are things worth. Okay, so I need to set up a series of payments and I'm gonna call this a, uh, let's say it's a three-year bond, which traditionally pays 5% uh, five, five per year uh, as a coupon. We call that a 5% uh, three-year bond. And it looks like this. Let's see if I can set it up so that you can see a series of uh, payments. And this is the payments. And, well, actually, well, let me be more specific. This is called, uh, right here, interest payments. And bonds consist of interest payments and principal payments. And this is gonna be a very typical bond structure. Let's shorten this to interest and principal. Total payment. And then we're gonna present value it over in this column here. Okay. First off, if you have a $1,000 bond, a uh, $100,000 bond, which I've created, uh, and it pays 5% per year, what you actually get is an interest payment every six months of $2,500. So it looks like this. So you are gonna be paid 5% of 100,000, but it comes in two installments at six months and at one year, and then this is one and a half years. Uh, this is, whoops. Years, this is, two years, this is two and a half years, and at year three, you get your final, oops, label that, 
At year three, you get your uh, last interest payment. And the principal payment comes at the final moment. So we call that maturity of the bond. And in total, and I'm just going to sum up this column plus this column so you can see how the structure of a bond works, is you would get uh, $2,500 uh, every six months, and then you get a $102,500 at the end of the third year. Okay, now the reason I've set these all up is I want to create a uh, discounting cash flows formula which will tell me what the total um, present value is of this bond, which I'm going to put into here. So I'm going to sum up, I'm going to set this up so I can sum up these six future cash flows that occur in the interims of six months, one year, one and a half, two years, two and a half years, three years. Okay, that is all a lot of lead up to showing you how this formula here gets used to price up a bond in each of the cash flows of the bond. So I need to follow what this formula is in B2, and I'm going to do it this following way. I'm going to say equal sign, tells Excel that we're about to do some math. The future uh, payment of $2,500, then I divide that by one plus the yield, and I have not set up a place for me to make those calculations. Hang on one second. We need to set up a little point where I can input pieces. So let me show you what I'm doing that. I'm going to say the yield here is 5%. The number of discounting periods uh, overall will be determined by actually that. And the number of times per year uh, we already know is two. Um, so we'll say that that's that because bonds pay twice a year. Now I can reference, I just put those there so I can reference those cells in my formula. Here we go. Equals, here's the payment. I divide it by one plus the yield, which I have inputted there. I'm going to divide the uh, yield or discount rate by P, which is it's paid twice a year. Closing the parentheses, raising that to the power of the N, which is how much um, time has, it will elapse between, uh, how many compounding periods will elapse between that future payment and today. All of that, my spreadsheet calculates easily to that first payment six months from now is today worth $2,439.02. I could program it the same way um, here. That payment divided by one plus the yield divided by the P function, which makes the annual 5% into a semi-annual number properly. Raise that to the power of this is the second payment. My N is two, and I'll label that. Now, hopefully you know the autofill function by now, uh, working on spreadsheets. I'm gonna simply drag this. No, I'm gonna have to lock some cells. I'm going to lock the yield in by putting a little dollar sign in front. And that, whoops, I, I typed an error. I'm gonna put a little dollar sign in front. Thank you, Excel, for correcting my errors. Now I think if I autofill this, no, it's not something that's not quite right. What has it done? Oh yes, I need to lock the P. Don't forget to lock the P. Put in dollar signs. Okay, now I think I have a good formula. Yes, I do. Okay, so each of these is discounted and they are each uh, essentially interest payment here in payments two, three, four, five, and six is increasingly discounted because it's further away in time. And then this final payment, discounts 102,500 down to 88. That's gonna be three years from now. Now, interestingly, and this is not a coincidence, the total value of this bond is $100,000. You say, well, of course it is. We started with $100,000, bonds are safe, and they should be valued at 100,000. And I'm about to change that notion by saying, now that I've programmed in a discount rate for valuing each of these six cash flows, I can change my discount rate and the net effect will be that the value of the bond, the present value, will change um, with this nifty calculator that we built. So what if instead, um, and this is really the work of what bond professionals do or people who deal with interest rates, but in fact, the correct discount rate because of changes in risk or inflation expectations um, is actually 6%. Doing that immediately changes 
the value of the bond here. It went from 100,000 previously at issuance, say, or when it was new, we thought, oh, that's worth 100,000. In fact, if interest rates or discount rates uh, or the yield is increased to 6%, the value, the price of the bond that the market would pay becomes 97,000. Uh, if I go the other direction and say, in fact, we expect inflation to be low or the correct discount rate is something far lower than 5%, we would expect the, 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 the bond to actually be worth more than 100,000. I'll do that. Now the bond is worth 108,000 if we have a discount rate of 2% on a 5% coupon bond. The more you go away from 5%, again, 5%, it's worth 100,000. The more you move away from 5%, the greater you would get away from the par value or the face value of the bond. We would call this face value, the value, the starting value of in cell D3 of the face value or par value. But as we shift around our discount rate, the price of the bond shifts off of 100,000, the original face value, into something greater or less. You may, if you pay attention to financial discussions, hear about the the seesaw between uh, seesaw relationship between price and yield. What they mean by that is, as the yield goes up to say seven percent, the price goes down to ninety-four percent. We could go even more extreme: ten percent becomes only worth eighty-seven thousand. Contrarily, uh, the seesaw goes the other way. As you go below the the stated interest rate. 4%, the price of the bond can go up well beyond the face value. Hope that gives you a little insight into how discounting cash flow in a non-annual way gets us closer to reality and in fact it kind of drives uh, the bond markets which are in a sense uh, a crucial key component of global finance. Hope that's interesting.